This is the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, and co-sponsors Bo Cook from Lone Market, Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, the official clothing partner of the Paracave Podcast, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, welcome back to the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this episode is the replay chat of the uh, talk chat that I had with the Duckman on Pulse FM, 89.9 FM, on a Sunday night. And I also chat to him on a Friday night as well, so that one is the preview of the round this chat on the sunday night is the review of the round now there was certainly some interesting results in the nrl this round round 12 the indigenous round um none other than the west tigers getting over the cowboys 66 to 18 so a massive result there for the tigers so uh this is our chat uh that we have going through the games as fan opinions Uh, we also delve into the new south wales origin side as well and who we would pick for new south wales we did the our thoughts and selections of the queensland side on the friday night show which you can uh, look through the uh, the list of podcasts and you'll be able to see that one as well so if you want to know our thoughts on the queensland side check that one out uh, but tonight, we in this podcast, we check out our thoughts on the New South Wales side. So, uh, enough of me talking. It's over to you, Duckman. All right, welcome back to the Weekend Sports Wrap. You're here with the Duckman and our special guest, Troy Warner from the Barricade Podcast. Troy, how are you going? Going fantastic, Duckman. What a round of NRL football leading into the uh, Origin Series. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. How would you like to be a coach at the moment? So, some of these clubs, it- it's just unreal. <laughs> What's oh, going on? It is at uh, the moment. Upsets and everything. Yeah, definitely for sure at the moment. I think it is the closest ever season, bar one season. The competition table is so jam packed together. Um, any team can make the eight uh, at the end of the year because you know if you win one, two, three, four games in a row, those bottom teams will suddenly be up the top, and those top teams will be suddenly down the bottom. So. Uh, there's some great results happening, some great footy being played, and just the closeness of this competition is unreal. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because Gold Coast, they were in the top eight. Let's have a look at this. Let's see if this ladder is right. Might be pretty close. They were in the eight last week, I'm pretty sure. Now they're 10th this week. They've dropped two games in a row. So, And I don't think they're playing that bad. Last week they did get smoked uh, by the Knights. Didn't help them, but... Uh, they lost today. I thought they could have and should have won today, but we'll get to that when uh, that kicks around. So back on Thursday night, as we said, the Panthers got up against the Broncos there, 15 points to four. Uh, I think some of uh, Brad Fittler's state of origin selections are going to start coming a bit clearer now uh, after this round. So he'll be happy with what he's seen at the moment, won't he? And uh, Panthers, they, they did a fair job against the Broncos and Broncos, some of the fans are blown up about it a bit, but uh, I think they did a good job not getting blown off the park even by the Panthers. Yeah, look, it just wasn't the Broncos' night. The Panthers, they went up to Queensland for a job and got it done. Uh, as you said, a few state of origin hopefuls. Well, there'll be definitely one one definite there, and that's Nathan Cleary. He'll be the halfback for New South Wales. A lot of conjecture about... Um, Jerome Luai, whether he'll get the 5'8th position or whether Nico Hines will get that position, I, I, I think we might talk about it a little bit later, but I think uh, Jerome will get that spot only because he's been in New South Wales before and, and last year. 
and Freddie's pretty a pretty loyal guy, so I think he'll get the he'll get the number six spot. But he was under a little bit of uh, controversy in the game. He touched a, a touch judge and uh, copped a fine, I think, for that game. Uh, so yeah, from that game for touching the the sideline official. So it was after the Penrith try. And uh, there's been a l- little bit of conjecture about that. Some are saying he should have been suspended for that. Um, others are saying there wasn't that much in it. And he should have just copped a fine. So he's copped a fine. Um, and the Panthers roll on. They go back up to the top of the NRL ladder now. So um, they're in a comfortable position leading into this origin period because they'll have a few players out. So it'll be a bit of a difficult time for them. Uh, so good a good position for them where they are at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, they'd be happy where they are at the moment. Uh, people were saying earlier in the year, including, I think, Billy Slater was saying, as long as Penrith can stay around about fourth, they don't need to be at the top of the competition. As long as they're close and getting to the finals, they've got enough uh, strength and depth to be able to roll through it. So uh, I imagine, yeah, that's going to probably be the case. Uh, after all, that will more than likely be what happens there. And uh, we'll talk about New South Wales sides after we do uh, to wrap up for this weekend. All right, first upset. <laughs> if we so George Illawarra ended up getting up against the Roosters 24-22. It was going backwards and forwards like a tennis game, this one. We both thought the Roosters would get it. And uh, <laughs> we hung up having a chat. Then St. George Illawarra would pull one out of the fire and, and got the trophies. Who would I honestly didn't think they'd do that. Yeah, unbelievable. The Dragons had all their dramas throughout the week. They sacked their coach, Anthony Griffin, and Ryan Carr, the assistant coach, has come in, and he's now got a 100% coaching record in the NRL, so, uh, or for, at St. George Illawarra, at least. But uh, it was 12 nil at half time to the Dragons, and you thought that they were cruising pretty comfortably, and the Roosters, they were struggling a little bit, as they have over the last couple of weeks. And... Um, Victor Radley's found himself in a little bit of trouble with a, uh, I think it was like a headbutt that they've said. It wasn't, he led with the head, uh, but it wasn't a traditional headbutt, but he's still facing, I think, three to four weeks on the sidelines for that. Um, So uh, the Dragons, they were winning 12 nil at half time. They were looking pretty comfortable, but then after half time, Trent Robertson must have given the Roosters a big blow up in the sheds because. They've come out and they've actually, they were actually winning the game uh, 22-18 and with about um, or four, four minutes to go, they scored their last try. So they were looking like they were going to come back and win this game over the Dragons. Uh, and then the last 16 seconds, there was a play from the Dragons. It was the old double kick. Ben Hunt put up a kick. Uh, the, the Dragons got the ball back and... Then Tyrell Sloan has, has seen something out wide and just put the crossfield kick over and the Dragons wingers got the bounce and uh, scored the try under the near the post and Zach Lomax has converted that and they got the win. So it was a pretty f- uh, frenetic sort of scenes after, uh, after he scored that try. It was like they won the grand final and the crowd's going off, the players are going off, but... You know, well done to the Dragons for getting that win. As I said, they had that controversial week and um, they really stuck to the guns and they never gave up and got the try in the end and beat the Roosters, who are struggling at the moment. Yeah, they've been struggling since Joseph Suwali came out and said he's going to Rugby Union. It's just like the wheels fell off the bus and uh, they are way off the boil. Last week they got smashed by Pemmerf. Uh, it's good to see them get competitive this week. Dead. And I do remember the Dragons were led in that game. I thought, oh, a bit surprised by this. Uh, and, yeah, they've got the win. It might give them a bit of momentum now. And I don't think it was Anthony Griffin's fault either, but it's serious. But some of those guys need to have a bit of think about what you're doing. You need to aim up week in, week out, surely, if you're getting paid several hundred thousand dollars seats to be playing. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully they can roll on and do something better out of their season now, the Dragons. Yeah, this is it. I mean, it's always a strange one when a coach gets sacked from a club because we generally do see that the club comes out and and the players come out and they win that next game, which is, and then the questions get asked. Well, why couldn't you do that when the 
our previous coach was here. So, uh, look, they've got the talent. The unfortunate part for the Dragons is, is they won the game, and then but they find themselves on the bottom of the ladder at the moment because the Bulldogs won today. So, <laughs> um, and, and the Tigers won by a big margin, um, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, but yeah, they, <laughs> f- they find themselves actually going down on the ladder to last position at the moment. So... Um, even though they won the game, they're down in last, but that'll give them confidence uh, going into this week's game against the Dolphins, who may have a couple of players out due to origin, but um, that'll give them confidence uh, of actually getting that win, and um, they should yeah give a good fight against the Dolphins. As for the Roosters, well, they'll have a couple of players out for Origin and they've got the bye this week, so they might have to do a little bit of soul-searching at training and uh, just see what they can come up with and come back for their next match. Yeah, well, that could be good for them, you know, because if you're out of form, a break, uh, a mental break can be uh, a blessing for you and uh, if you're in form, sometimes it puts the handbrake on you like half-time, sometimes it does in a game. You can be cruising hit half-time and... Uh, the other team gets a rev up, and next thing you know, the game changes its tempo and all this sort of stuff. So the Roosters fans will be hoping they turn around. I personally hope they do not turn around. So <laughs> 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 I think about that. I don't mind. I, just, I like the competition's competitive this year. Uh, every single game, <laughs> anyone can beat anyone on the day, as we're seeing week in, week out now. The next game, so this one, I, I would say it's an upset. You probably don't, but I think the way that it finished was an upset. So Souths uh, took on the Eels or hosted the Eels and the Eels got up 36 points to 16. The reason why I say I think it was an upset was because Souths were uh, dominating the game and leading, what, 16 points to 6, I think it was. And then uh, the Eels just came roaring back. And once they did, Souths were like, oh, hang on, we have to start going again. But they couldn't get going and Parramatta had all the momentum. Yeah, look, it was Indigenous round and we all know that South Sydney are, are a proud Indigenous club and got some great Indigenous players in their side, Cody Walker, Alex Johnston and Latrell Mitchell, to name a couple, a few. Uh, so this was going to be a great clash. Uh, they moved it to Allianz Stadium as well, uh, closer to the, the well, they now moved from Redfern to... Uh, I'm not too sure where it is now, but they've just had a new uh, centre of excellence. So closer to their home territory, uh, they moved this game to. And it was the first time that they were playing for the Eric Sims medal as well. The men in the match got that got that medal, uh, which was Dylan Brown in the end. Uh, as you said, um, Parramatta got off that start. They scored the first try through Sean Russell. Uh, then Alex Johnston come back and scored a try for South Sydney, um, which increases his try scoring tally as well. He got a double actually, uh, but it was sort of a bit of a seesawing affair, and it was twelve ten at half time. And you thought, look, this is still anybody's game here, and um, anything could happen. And then Campbell Graham scored it after half time and South got the lead there and you thought okay what what will Parramatta do here but um, they played some really great football shortly after half time Ryan Madison went off with a calf injury uh, which will see him out for a few weeks Um, there was also um, another injury to someone whose uh, mind's just escaped me at the moment. Um, so Parramatta were down two players uh, for the whole game, or after half time, down two players. Uh, but they, Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses stepped up, and um, Bryce Cartwright as well had a had a great game as well. Scored a try himself, and in the end, the the Eels ended up scoring the tries and Moses kicking the goals and blew it out to thirty six sixteen. Yeah, there you go. It ended up being a good result there, Parramatta. Uh, is uh, Bryce Cartwright the most inconsistent bloke in the NRL or what? Like, one week he looks like he's going to be on the verge of state of origin selection. The next week, you're wondering if he's going to be playing reserve grade or something like that. Well, there was, uh, a, oh. there was a couple of years ago, yeah, he was touted as a state of origin player. Um, it never came to fruition, but certainly this season he has... Uh, stepped it up and he's been par- one of Parramatta's best players this season. I think with the injuries to Sean Lane at the start of the year um, 
he got his chance there in the back row and then he's, he's a bit on the bench, but now he'll probably find himself back in that back row spot, the second row spot as well, uh, with the injury to Ryan Madison uh, and the uh, new injury to Sean Lane. So he'll find himself playing some starting football, but yeah, he's a ball player. He... he he just really has uh, stepped it up this year and has been playing some great footy. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and I like that Dylan Brown won the Eric Sims medal too. So Eric Sims, people who don't know, probably South's best fullback they've ever had after Clive Churchill is probably the best fullback that's probably ever played the game. So he would be definitely in the top couple for sure. So uh, they uh, hold him in such high esteem. So I never saw him play because he played way before our time. Uh, but he's up there would be the equivalent, I suppose, of Andrew John. So, in the level of Eric Sims, he's uh, one of the best. So, South's top point scorer for four years in a row. I think a uh, proud Indigenous guy, uh, born, just looking at his stats now, born in Korea, 77. So, uh, he was there for the medal presentation too, wasn't he? Or did he get his son to do it? I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'm not too sure who did the presentation, but I know Greg Inglis was one of the... Um what he judges of of the medal? Um, there was Greg Inglis, and there was somebody else who just. Uh, it, sorry, the mind just passes me there. But um, yeah, Eric Sims, who was uh, South's former top point scorer before Adam Reynolds broke that record, um, and yeah, it was great to see Dylan win that medal on the opposition team. Uh, very prestigious medal, and. I think probably what made him get that medal was just his never give up um, attitude, and you saw that with his try that he scored off that Mitchell Moses kick. He just put it down just before the dead ball line, which just showed that he just never gave up on the on the play. So, congratulations to Dylan on winning that medal. Yeah, it's funny because uh, when when the Eels go well, it's normally on the back of what he does. It doesn't People give Mitchell Moses a pretty hard time, but if Dylan Brown's playing really well, yeah, he will uh, really take control to some degree, probably even more than Mitchell Moses, and uh, uh, has a big influence on how the side goes. All right, in the next game, the Sharkies took on the Knights. That's no surprise in particular. 26 points to six. I did hear, so I can't verify it. I don't know. Hopefully you can. Uh, that Caelan Ponga uh, has had some sort of injury or have a head knock or something like that. Is that right? He did go off the field for a HIA, but he did come back onto the field, so um, it wasn't a Category 1 um, HIA, so um, hopefully everything's all right for Kalen, but you know, obviously it was because he came back on the field. He did have a moment in the game where he did uh, not remember the tackle count, and actually he was tackled, and then he just sort of put the ball on the ground and started to run back for defence, but uh, the the Newcastle Knights still had tackles up their sleeve, so a little bit of an embarrassing moment there for Kalen, but um, it, it happened. But the Sharks team, they just seem to go from strength to strength at the moment and really ro- rolling on. Will Kennedy at the back there, he's showing some great footy skills and scoring tries and... Um, one of their unsung heroes is probably Connor Tracy as well, playing in the centres as well. So, and Nico Hines as well. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Nico. So Nico Hines on the back of this, so uh, he will pretty much get state of origin selection now for New South Wales. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure Jerome Law will as well. So how Brad I imagine will manage this is Nico Hines will probably get a bench spot. And he's got utility value there. So in that bench spot, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, I do know Cronulla are rolling on. They're looking good now. They're starting to uh, really hit their straps and they're probably going to be a top four side that will push for the competition if they can continue their form. So they're just getting the business done every week. They're not wiping teams out too bad, but uh, they're getting the job done. They've taken up the Premier of uh, last year when they played them, so I don't think too much has changed this year, how they're doing their business. I think they'll keep on kicking on. Uh, the next game, so <laughs> this is the one that's the biggest <laughs> upset I think I've seen for years. Not just the result, but the score. West Tigers 66, uh, North Queensland 18. So I had a look at some stats uh, last night, and I think they said that West Tigers' biggest win before all West or Balmain's biggest win 
uh, for biggest win for either of them was actually West against Balmain. And uh, I can't remember when it was. It was like 50-something years ago, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was a long time back. Yeah, that's it. So uh, apparently the West Tigers, the Balmain Tigers... And the West Magpies have never scored 66 points, so um, they have now. And this comprehensive win against the Cowboys at Leichhardt Oval last night. Look, it was a amazing performance by the Tigers. Luke Brooks' 200th first grade game, so it was a milestone game. He, he Obviously, his teammates wanted to go out and get the win for him. Um, it, look, it, was, it just happened straight from the start. Uh, big Stefano Utukamanu scored the first try, big front rower scoring the first try and it just rolled on for them there and 24-6 at half time he did not expect it to end up being 66-18 to um, un- unbelievable scores and you know, it just seemed like a training run for the Tigers really, I don't know what happened to the Cowboys They just their defence was definitely not there they just they just fell apart and uh, basically yeah Luke Brooks had a had a blinder of a game and um, took it took it to the Cowboys and it was just finding holes doing try assists and they got away with a win yet still yes. went, uh, Tim Sheens wasn't ha- too happy in the press conference uh, um, having a go at people uh, on Twitter for having a go at Luke Brooks on social media and all this, and it's like, well, you just won a game, 66 to 18, so, <laughs> yeah, be happy. Yeah, well, there were some people that actually came out and said he should be picked in the New South Wales squad. I don't, I don't know what they were smoking last time. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not playing that good. He's not that consistent. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he's got, got a bit to do. Like, um, just needs to turn it on every day, and when they do... Well, they've shown that I think they have got potential. So, uh, yeah, they just need to be consistent with it so they can shut teams out and really, they're really keeping a lot of teams around the 20 point mark. So, they haven't got blown away too much. This is the first time I've ever seen them really put a stack of points on anyone. And, like you just said, their highest score ever. But I didn't think they could do it. I really didn't think that they perhaps had the strike power to do it the way they've been playing. So, in the way Tim Sheens will play, uh, a lot of safety first football as well, so just make sure they go through the motions and get them playing well. Uh, well, they hit their straps now, so let's have a look who they got next week at the moment. Uh, they so got oh, that's the bye, they got, they've got the bye next got, week, so that might be a little yeah. bit of a, a a downer for them, but uh, they will prob- probably wanted to keep that mem- momentum going, but they've got the bye next week. and Then yeah, Canberra uh, the week after, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think one disappointing thing out of the game for the Tigers is they score 66 points, 11 tries to three, but Alex Twell doesn't get on the try scorers list. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah that would be... Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny just how the whole the whole thing works. So there was a meteor that landed in North Queensland last night too, around Townsville, strangely around the same time this game finished, and there's there are pictures of it all over the place. And I said, don't worry, people, there's just the Cowboys season I come to a crashing halt into the ground after the West Tigers game. Uh, and <laughs> it got some good responses that. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how how that goes. Well, like, an inter- uh, interesting thing, I think I heard that the Cowboys are actually treating last week and this week as a mini sort of camp away because they've got Parramatta on Friday night. So I think they're actually staying down in New South Wales um, at the moment, like last week and this week, so uh, probably probably a good thing they haven't gone home if a meteorite's gone uh, landed in Townsville. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, people will be hoping that uh, they're not on the back of that meteorite. So, um, w- whatever they're doing for the camp, I hope it works and they're uh, a bit more successful next week. They don't want to cop another one of them next week; it won't be going so well for them. Uh, the last game last night, so the Dolphins took on the Storm. Uh, I think I predicted that the Dolphins, I can't remember if I predicted the Dolphins would win or the Storm would win. At least Kafusi's got himself in a bunch of trouble, but and the Storm got up 24 points to 16. Yeah, uh, absolutely silly and crazy. I'm not too sure what was going through Felice's head at the time. Uh, Doing a a hit like that on his former teammate, Christian Welsh, uh, and with Origin coming up, 
excuse me, around the corner. Uh, uh, he probably would have been one of the f- one of the first picks for Queensland. Uh, but now he's facing a three to four week suspension. Three if he uh, pleads not uh, pleads guilty. Four if he fights it and loses. So yeah, very very foolish. Uh, it cost his team ten minutes as well. Um, and this is this is really early on in the game, so um, he was obviously trying to make his intentions known, and he certainly did. But it cost his team ten minutes, so um, Wayne Bennett, I don't think, will be too happy about that. But as for Melbourne, well, they just uh, they controlled the game very well. They knew what they were doing. Uh, they never looked like losing. I think it was, I think it's the eleventh straight game that coach Craig Bellamy has beaten. Uh, Wayne Bennett um, well, Craig Bellamy didn't look too happy after the full time siren happened actually they did the Fox, uh, Fox did the shot up to the box and he just shook his head he, he didn't look too happy so there was obviously something that was annoying him about that game but they got away with the game in the end they didn't score a, they didn't score a point in the second half maybe that was what uh, Craig Bellamy was shaking his head about but uh, they got the win and they find themselves in fifth position on the ladder. Yeah, so this is going to be one thing that's going to let Melbourne down, you know. Since Ryan Pappenhausen, who was um, set like a 50-year point scoring record before he got injured and destroyed his knee like smashed an eggshell for Hammer last year, um, they, they were scoring points and they run teams down the second half. So they haven't looked like that since Ryan Pappenhausen got injured. I know they've got strike power like uh, Jerome Hughes and they've got Cameron Munster and uh, Nick Meany and all these guys that can do stuff, but they just have not had that. If, if they get behind, they look like they have problems. They have to try to grind it out, and uh, I know they can do it, but they did once upon a time. They look like they could put 50 points on teams all of the time. They don't look like that same team anymore. Yeah, look, it's going to be an interesting period for the Storm. Obviously, they'll have a, a few players out with Origin. Um, Xavier Coates, maybe. Uh, Cameron Munster will be a definite for Queensland. Harry Grant will be a definite for Queensland. Uh, Christian Welsh might get a start for Queensland. So they'll have a few players out. Uh, but we do see generally the next man up mentality with the Melbourne Storm so if a player's out then whoever steps in usually steps up so they're coming into that tough period for them they've got the bye this week so uh, that's a little bit of a a consolation for them at the moment Uh, and they'll have the week off and they'll go back to the drawing board and train hard and probably not go to Bali like Newcastle players but um (laughs) Yeah, so probably smart. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't see Craig letting them go go away during a bye <laughs> week. Um, so, yeah, Ryan Pappenhausen's an interesting one. There's still no word on as to when he's actually going to be coming back. So, um, it's it's not good for obviously not good for Ryan. It's not good for Melbourne, and it's not good for rugby league fans in general because when he's playing well he he's an excitement machine and um it's been a long time since he's actually played so there's there is no word at the moment as to when he is coming back so this is about 12 months to the day too from when he did his knee it's getting pretty close i can't remember a little bit further close to origin or a little bit further back but he was in the running. I would have thought seriously he was going to test Tedesco for the starting spot. If Tedesco wasn't New South Wales captain, he might have had genuine troubles holding the spot. Pappenhausen was dead set shooing to be uh, on the field, so he probably would have been number 14. But uh, for people who don't know, yeah, like I said, literally he shattered his kneecap. It was just destroyed. And uh, I think he did his patella tendon as well, didn't he? It was there's a major, major knee operation, and they had major problems putting it back together. And the recovery is just indefinite at the moment. I'm not too sure how long it will take because it's so severe what happened. Yeah, that's it. And uh, he even has gone over to America and seen the uh, trainer to the to the stars, Bill Knowles, uh, where Tom Tommy Turbo went and Latrell Mitchell went as well um so he's even gone over there as well and and had a little bit of rehab and and conditioning and the like so um there still isn't any word as to when he'll be back so for for rugby league's sake and his own sake let's hope he's back soon 
Um, but yeah, it's it, they definitely are missing him. Yeah, absolutely. I don't doubt that one little bit. Though even New South Wales will be too. Uh, it's just an X factor guy that makes things happen off the spur of the moment. Uh, all right. So the two games today. The first one of them was uh, the Bulldogs hosting uh, Gold Coast, and Gold Coast were leading. I actually thought they might win this one. I think I predicted them too. Uh, or, or no, actually, I predicted the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs got up. But um, I, I just can't remember. There's been so many upsets. I'll, I'll have to listen to the tape all over again. Who I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was uh, the Bulldogs, but I'm not certain about that. Uh, the Bulldogs won anyway, 20 points to 18. And Justin Holbrook, he'd be disappointed now because his side's been very good. Uh, they were in the eight, now they're sitting temp. So that must be a bit of a slow burn for him, really, because the, you have a couple more losses here in it. Because the comp's so close, you could easily be back in like 15th in no time at all, 15th, 16th position as well. Yeah, this is it. As, as I said before, uh, the bottom teams, if they can get a string a few wins together, they'll climb up. And those teams that are up the top, if they have a few losses, they'll go down to the bottom. And uh, for the Titans, they, they'll they be disappointed that they lost this game today. They were 14-0 at half time, and you thought they were in control. David Fafida, who's p- pushing for Queensland origin spot, uh, scored the first try, and it just looked like there was no Bulldogs defence. It was, just looked like it was a, a big big adult playing against kids when he scored his try. So um, you thought this could be this could be a cricket score, but um, the Bulldogs they dug in there and they uh, ended up coming back. A few controversial moments through the game. Um, there was the hip drop tackle penalty on Reed Marnie which absolutely did not look like a hip drop as well at, at all um, and fans were blowing up saying what what was this about why was he why was he penalized why was he put on report um, so I don't think he'll have a case to answer to that but very shortly afterwards he was involved in a tackle with big Tino Fasul Malawi, Malawi and um, Big Tino looked like he'd raised his arm and uh, his forearm connected with Reed Barney. So, and then Reed's gone off for a HIA. And shortly after that, the uh, Titans have scored. So, very interesting game. There's a bit of uh, heat and a few uh, scuffles and get-togethers, but the Bulldogs they held on and they held their nerve and. I think Matt Burton's kicking game led to a couple of tries. Those high bombs that you see uh, led to a couple of tries. I think the Titans let them bounce a couple of times and uh, the Bulldogs ended up with a ball and scored. So they held in there. Josh Adokar, he got a try on return from injury and uh, great to see in Indigenous round as well. And look, they they held on for a two-point win. So it was great to see. Yeah, it's a good win for the Bulldogs there. And Josh Adokar, he's playing his way back into it. I'm pretty sure I was talking about sports Sunday this morning. Uh, really is right on the verge of State of Origin selection again. He's been good this year, uh, even though the Bulldogs have been a bit patchy. So they're uh, rebuilding. So he is fitting in nicely with their whole plan. So it's long-term stuff. Some of this stuff you can't do over the night. So, uh, But uh, what do they say? Form is temporary and class is permanent. So... Uh, he's definitely got plenty of that, Josh Adokar. Uh, the next game, so Ricky Stewart, he won't be up with this. Might be buying a new door in his coach's box. Uh, when the Raiders took on Manly today, they went down 42 points to 14. Down in Canberra too. Uh, but I don't like losing like that down there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Manly really turned it on. And on the back of that, people reckon that Tom Trebojevic probably now locked himself in a New South Wales spot too. The centre. Yeah, he scored three tries today, so Tommy Trubovic. So it looked like he has secured a centre position for New South Wales. Uh, we, I mean, yeah, he, he was pretty good. It was probably his best game of the year uh, today against Canberra, who beat Parramatta last week down in Canberra. And interesting stat is that any team that's beaten Parramatta has gone on to lose the next week. So um, for those teams that beat Parramatta, you probably won't win the next week. So um, don't beat Parramatta <laughs> if you want to win the next week. But look, the the Manly Seagulls, they were tough. They they 
held their nerve. They yeah, scored tries. And it was a bit of spite in this game as well. Um, a bit of spite in this game. Uh, in the second half especially, Hudson Young and Sean Kepi got sin bin at one stage. There was a few other push and shovers as, as well. Uh, but the Canberra Raiders, they'll be really disappointed with this. They um, back at home or in, at home in front of their home fans and against one of their sort of arch rivals, I guess you could call um, the Manly Sea Eagles, and uh, they never looked in it. They, they did have, they did win, they have won five in a row, so they were looking for six in a row, so a massive achievement if they would have got six in a row, like South Sydney as well, who were going for six in a row as well, I think. So it's not easy to win six in a row in this competition. So it, it was always going to be tough. But uh, Tommy Turbo, he was on fire. Uh, he scored, as I said, three tries and has probably played himself into a New South Wales jersey. Yeah, uh, I do think that'll be uh, the case there, what will end up happening here. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. We're going to have a look at the state of origin size now, what we think is going to happen here. Let's have a look, trying to find. So, we've got a couple of ones. This is interesting. You should see NT News. Let's pull up theirs as well. This is funny. So, uh, all right, so NT, I'm not even going to let me read the article. I just looked at it before. I looked at it too many times this month, apparently. All right, so New South Wales squad at the moment. So, this is coming on Sporting News. They have got uh, Tedesco at fullback there, Josh Adekar, two, Trebojevic, three, Militarial Mitchell, four, Brian Toto, five. Uh, Luai 6, Cleary 7, Payne Haas 8, now Damien Cook 9, Trebojevic, Jake Trebojevic that is 10, uh, Cameron Murray 11, Lonnie Martin 12, Isaiah Yeo 13, Nico Hines 14, Junior Paulo 15, Hudson Young is a surprise in the mix there, number 16 and Tyson Frizzell is probably also a bit of a surprise in number 17, so what do you think of that side So. Uh, question marks would be around maybe Liam Martin, like I'll go for Pampers and that sort of stuff, but there's plenty of guys out there that are doing the job, so he would be uh, under a bit of pressure to get a starting spot at the moment. Uh, the back, so I think that looks pretty close to what we might get there anyway. Yeah, look, I think that's probably pretty close to what will be named. As I said before, I think you got your two definites that will be named. Obviously, James Tedesco as captain and fullback and Nathan Cleary as a halfback. Um, but I think it's probably pretty much what you read out there. Leah Martin, I think he, he will get a, a second row spot. He did the job last year. He represented Australia as well pretty well at the, at the World Cup. Uh, he has had a little bit of an injury interrupted season this year but uh, he played last last Thursday night and came through that game okay so I think he'll be he'll be picked there um, I think Damien Cook will probably just get the spot over Appy Coras- um in in that hooking role and I think yeah probably maybe Hudson Young will get that get a bench spot it's interesting to think that uh, Tyson Frizzell is come, going to come back into the mix uh, for New South Wales. He hasn't been there the last couple of years. Um, obviously with the struggling Newcastle Knights team, but it will be good to see him. The other um, Newcastle Knights player that probably maybe get maybe 18th or on the bench is Daniel Saifidi as well. Um, so I think, yeah, that's probably pretty much what you read out there will be the team. And I think that team is going to be announced either tomorrow morning or uh, dinner time, 7 o'clock or something like that tomorrow night. Yeah, 100%. So we'll, we'll see how that all ends up panning out there as well. So I want to see if there's Fox Sports here. Yeah, they put forward this year. They think it's going to be at the moment. Greg Alexander looks like it. Oh, he hasn't named any team, so that is useless information. Well, again. So Brandy's, yeah, Brandy's part of the coaching yeah, staff. He's not going to select a, a team, it's a bit hard. Yeah, so we'll have a look. But, so this is what they're going with at the moment from Fox Sports themselves. So they reckon Tedesco are fullback. That's right. So contenders would be Latrell Mitchell, Chaboyevich and Dylan Edwards as well. I don't think Dylan Edwards is going to get in, but he could probably hold his own. Uh, a winger's... Wingers, they got Brian Toto and Daniel Tupu, so I don't reckon Tupu's done enough to get his spot. 
uh, Josh Adokar. Surely he's coming back to or hold his own. Uh, if they've got contenders down with Brighton, Campbell Graham, uh, Suali, that he's not going to get picked, I can tell you. He could, like, score 100 tries in between now and the origin, and it won't matter. He will not get picked. Uh, Alex Johnson, so he must be feeling ripped because he uh, would have to be close, but they're not going to carry a winger on the bench, unfortunately, for him. So uh, he won't get in that side. Uh, Campbell Graham is the interesting one because he yeah. could probably drop in at uh, centre or winger. So I just don't think they're going to carry uh, someone like that at the moment. Yeah, Campbell uh, Graham. Campbell Graham is probably the biggest sort of disappointment that may not get picked for this New South Wales side. He's been the form centre yep. of the competition, but with Latrell Mitchell, getting Latrell Mitchell into the side, into the centre position, and Tom Trevojevic as well, um, and your wingers, you've got Brian Toto and probably Josh Adokar. So Campbell Graham represented Australia last year at the World Cup. He's been the form centre of the competition this year in the NRL. So if he doesn't get selected, he'll be one of the most uh, sort of disappointing non-selections. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so the centres last year for game two and three were Matt Burton and Steve Brighton and had Jack White in there as well. I think he's going to... He, well, he's retired from it anyway, so he's yeah. not going to play. And Tony Staggs, I don't think Tony Staggs will get in. There's too many people there already ahead of him, log jamming him, and they would be Latrell Mitchell and Trebojevic there. They're uh, just playing too good not to pick him. And this is going to be why Campbell Graham doesn't get into the centre spot either. Uh, Matt Burton might get in. He could he could do the same thing. He could score 100 points. It won't make any difference now. Uh, but his kicking will be considered. So if Nico Hines wasn't playing good, and let's say someone like uh, Jerome Lua wasn't playing good, that could find Matt Burton in the spot. But other than that, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, 5A for more than likely probably going to be Jerome Lua. The only other option really is Nico Hines. Cody Walker's playing good too, but I can't see him picking three guys like that. So too, too many guys playing the same sort of football. So uh, only two of them are going to get in and Nico Hines got to be versatility so I think he'll be in over Cody Walker uh, you see anyone taking Nathan Cleary's full, uh, his halfback spot from him at the moment no nah, no nah, he, he's a definite uh, selection for New South Wales there probably yeah. there's no one close to him at the moment yeah so that's the same as the um, got Isaiah Yo there at lock I don't see anyone getting his spot there uh, second row so this one's a bit of a tough one because you go uh, Liam Martin, Cameron Murray, uh, Tarek Sims, uh, who else have we got there? Hudson Young, so do you think he'll come in? Uh, a, a locker R2, they reckon he's pretty good. Uh, Angus Crichton, I don't know, I think he's a bit out of touch at the moment, isn't he, Angus? So I'm not sure, but he'll push in. Sean Lane, he was playing good. If he had played this year like he did with the Eels last year at the back end of the season, I think he had a serious chance of making it, but he's injured at the moment anyway, isn't he? Yeah, he's just suffered a hamstring injury on uh, a couple of games into his return for this year. Uh, he was uh, close to selection for the World Cup last year. Um, as you said, he had an outstanding year, a breakout year for him. Uh, anyway, probably his best in the NRL. Uh, unfortunately, this year injuries have um, starved him of that form, so he won't be uh, available for selection Uh you probably got the three guys there, Cameron Murray, Liam Martin, Hudson Young, fighting out for that second row spot. Um, for that sec- Yeah, that second row spot. So between those and Tyson Frizzell as well. So probably yeah. those four will be fighting for two spots and maybe the other two will get a bench spot. Yeah, so Hooker nearly certain and it'll end up playing Damien Cook. Could be happy Carousel, but... Uh... I just don't think we can change that. So Damien Cook, he, he can be versatile off the bench too and move around a bit if they need to. Uh, so that gives them options there. Uh, and the props, so this could be a, a bit of a game changer too. So you've got Payne Haas, uh, Junior Paulo, and Jake Tabojevic and Campbell, Regan Campbell-Gillard were in the mix last year. Regan Campbell-Gillard's out injured. Uh, the other three, I imagine, will be there or close by. The other options, but you've got, like I said, just poor Jacob Saifidi. Uh, he's got a really good chance of getting in himself, so maybe he'll peg down a spot too. 
Yeah, look, well, Payne Haas is leading the Dally M's, I think, at the moment, so he's been playing some great pretty, footy. Pretty hard not to pick him, yeah. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> the other uh, definite that you'll pick, along with Tedesco and Cleary, so he, he'll be one of them. Um, Jake Travojevic will probably get that other starting spot, and then you'll have the impact of Junior Paolo coming off the bench, um, who can yeah. also do a little bit little bit of ball playing as well but in origin I think he's just best to do his his runs and his tackles yeah I, yeah, I think the big advantage Jake to boy which over other players because there's some players with more flair uh, is back they'll play 80 minutes and they need an 80 minute player 100% have an 80 minute player you're not going to burn two or three subs so that is uh, that'll be good the only way he'll be coming off is if he's injured he put an easy punch out 80 minutes if they need him to do that in the origin uh, so that is that there so that, that's what we think so we're not experts no, so don't, no. don't hang us from a tree over this sort of stuff like when we don't get it right <laughs> tomorrow um, so what do you got coming up in the Paracode podcast this weekend Troy uh, yeah, so this week I'll have the replay of this chat come out um, so people can pick their origin sides and comment on the socials and see how they go. Um, Tuesday or Wednesday I'll have my round 13 tipping podcast come out um, and then Thursday I'll probably have an interview style come out as well. So a lot more content coming out on the podcast these days. So um, stay tuned on the social media channels to see what's coming up. There you go, absolutely. Troy, thanks for your time again tonight. Always appreciate it. It's a good chat. And uh, it's good like sitting here like experts ourselves, <laughs> like, oh, we're in a selection panel for the origin. <laughs> we're probably miles off, so <laughs> have to ride on someone else's coattails. It's all good, but I look forward to seeing the squads when they get named. Yeah, not a problem, Duckman. Thank you very much for having me. And, yeah, <laughs> there's always a bit of fun trying to pick a, an origin side or, or an Australian side. But, uh, as you said, we're not experts. We're just fans. So, uh, we, yeah, as fans, we have an opinion. So, thank you very much for having um, me, and I'll chat to you next week. Yeah, next Friday night. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks, Troy. I'll chat to you then. Thanks, mate. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast.